Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Bean here, and today I'm coming at you with my September wrap-up, which I'm very surprised as to what I had accomplished as far as reading in September. Um, for those of you who don't know, I started grad school at the beginning of September, and I know that my reading has just kind of gone down as far as how much I'm reading. The majority of what I am getting through right now are audiobooks, mostly because when I'm uh, listening to books, uh, it's usually at work, um, because while I'm home, I'm attempting to catch up on home stuff, like housework and stuff, or I'm doing homework. <laughs> usually, those are the two things that happen while I'm at home. Um, so all of my fun time reading, I guess you could say my fun reading, it all basically takes place at work while I'm working. So luckily I work at a library and I'm able to read while I work. But still, it's it's been interesting. So just as an example, this month I managed to read 11 books, which is still pretty impressive for me. I'm very excited about that. Um, I listened to five audiobooks, read five ebooks, and then only read two actual print books that I own. I have three books here, um, but one of them I did a combination of reading the book, reading the ebook, and listening to the audiobook because I had all three on accident. Whoops. Um, but I'm actually really excited to about starting off this month because I started with reading some books that have been on my list for literally years. Um, Back when I was a child, my favorite movie was Jurassic Park. Um, and so I finally read the duology. I read Jurassic Park by Michael Creighton. Um, Crichton? Crichton? Sorry, I'm bad at names. Um, I gave Jurassic Park a 4.5 out of 5. I loved this book. I thought this was super science-y. I did appreciate the audiobook a lot more than I think I would have appreciated reading it physically but I will eventually go back and reread it. Um, there were a bunch of changes actually between the book and the movie. Yes, um, I can always do like a video on that kind of stuff if you guys are interested. But overall, I understand why they did a lot of the changes and it makes a lot of sense um, as far as like a movie plot line goes. Um, and the same thing goes for The Lost World, which I do have the hardcover for. I need to get the hardcover of this one because it'll just look nicer. Um, I ended up giving Jurassic, or I ended up giving Lost Park a 5 out of 5 because I actually really loved this one almost more than the other one. Um, the changes that they did I also understand, but I appreciated the book a little bit more. I appreciate the movie for the movie, um, but this book was really well done. Again, these books are very science-y. Um, the science, for the most part, from what I understand, is very legitimate. And then it takes a weird twist and they make a couple things just like, this is how this works. It's like, Not really, but we're going to go with it for plot reasons. Um, and because of that, this series works so well. I have read a Michael Creighton book before. I read Next back in high school, I want to say. And I think it just went over my head. So I look forward to reading more by this man because it's very, very good. It's very well done. Um, it's old. Yeah. They talk about Walkmans. They talk about VHS. They talk about that kind of stuff. Like, it's an old book just as far as years go, but I think that they're very well done and they hold up quite well. Are they for everyone? No, they are not. Um, so those two I read, um, within the first couple books of the month. Uh, the next book that I did read that I did finish was an ebook. And that was Into the Forest, Tales of the Baba Yaga. This book took me a little over a month to read. It was a collection of um, essay, like essays, short stories uh, by various female horror authors. Um, and there were many of them and they were so amazing. I give this a four out of five. I absolutely loved the majority of them. I do think some of them were really, didn't fit quite as well, but each of these short stories poems or such were the author's interpretation of the Baba Yaga story. So for those of you who don't know, the Baba Yaga is a Russian folk tale. Um, an old woman who lives in a house on chicken legs and basically in this series they made her into a feminist figure but they also did make her into a horror figure 
and it was very, very, very well done in my opinion. I highly recommend it if you're looking for short story compilations, um, especially for October, especially for Halloween time, Baba Yaga is a prominent figure that I really think deserves a lot more recognition. Uh, there was a forward in here by Christina Henry, so that's kind of what drew me to it. Um, Christina Henry is a well-known horror author, a horror thriller, weird retelling author. Um, I read her Alice series and it was well done. It was creepy, but I liked it. And yeah, so this was very interesting, very well done, and highly recommend it. Next one I read <laughs> was Mastermind, which is the first book in the Theo Cray and Jessica Blackwell, Blackwood, hmm, and Jessica Blackwood series by Andrew Main. Um, I read the first two books in this series. The first one, uh, Mastermind, Basically has the characters, the two main characters meet... Sorry, my AC just turned on. Has the two main characters meeting each other. Um, Jessica Blackwood is one of the top FBI agents who um, is put in an awkward position where she needs to go find people that she has no idea why. Um, and Theo Crane is a... He's a computational biologist. There we go. So basically... Theo Cray is like this absolutely brilliant and kind of crazy uh, biologist who used to work in crime at a crime lab um, and he did some questionable things and kind of got kicked out and now nobody likes him but he's really kind of charming and basically if he had chosen to go on a life of crime he would be really good at it um, and Jessica's basically there to try and keep an eye on him and make sure he's not a part of this giant scheme um, where there's blackouts randomly happening throughout uh, New York City along with this gas. It's, it's very intense. Again, it's a very scientific book. Apparently, I just read a bunch of, like, science-based novels this month, so that was, that's cool. I mean, I did. Um, but I gave this a, what did I give this? I gave this a 4 out of 5. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was very well done. I thought it was very interesting. And it kept my interest. Again, I listened to the audiobook of this one, but I did also have the ebook, so I kind of switched back and forth depending on if I was on a break or not at work. Um, and I think that was a really good way to go. It is on Kindle Unlimited, so that really did help. The next book I tried to read was The Murder of Mr. Wickham by Claudia Gray. Now, I have nothing bad to say about this book, but when I picked it up, I really was not in a historical fiction mood. And so I DNF'd it. I will try again. Um, this book is basically Agatha Christie meets Jane Austen, where a bunch of Jane Austen characters are all meeting together in this house um, along with their children, and they're kind of messing with time here. But basically, there's a murder. Mr. Wickham is murdered. Nobody likes him. And there's a couple kids that figure out who did it and it sounds very cute I just was not in the right headspace for it so I did not end up reading it. The next book I attempted to read actually was another one was a an arc that I got and it's called Haunted History of Invisible Women True Stories of America's Ghosts by Linnea Renee Heber and Heiber and Andrea Janes. I didn't get very far into this book, unfortunately. I love a good ghost story. I love reading about ghosts. I love hearing about ghosts. I love ghost stories. And I love the history that usually surrounds these ghost stories. And that's what I was expecting from this book. Unfortunately, it felt like a rant. It didn't feel like a well-researched, well-thought-out so story. It felt like a rant about how evil men are. And... And while I get it, some were ab are absolutely terrible, and these women did not have good men. Like, the men were not good in their lives for the most part. It, it did feel very attackish, and it did not feel very... I don't know, it just it left a very sour taste in my mouth, and I didn't finish it because of that, so... I think it had a great idea going for it, but I don't... I didn't really care for the execution of it, unfortunately. So, unfortunately, that was another DNF for me. In an effort to get back on track, I next read The Final Equinox by Andrew Main. This is the second book in the Theo Cray and Jessica Blackwood series. That's all that's out in this series so far. These are coming out one at a time very slowly, but he's writing like six series currently or something ridiculous. Um, this one... 
was very interesting. The final Equinox, I gave it a four out of five. Again, very sciencey, very well thought out, very well researched it felt like, unless I'm completely wrong and he just made up everything, which is also possible, it is a fiction story. It was about aliens. And I've always kind of been neutral on the whole alien thing. Like, I'm sure there's aliens because there's no way in heck we are the only beings in this universe. I never really thought too much about it outside of the fact of what Doctor Who quoted and what was his quote is like, this planet is so noisy. We're always sending out probes and we're sending out like all these dist these signals and stuff. It's so noisy. We're going to get attention. And I don't know, like that kind of that thought has always stuck with me. But the whole concept behind this story is that Theo Cray, our one of our main characters, is invited to a cult. Literally, he's told it's a cult. Um, where they believe that they have made contact with aliens and he's there to basically prove them right or wrong. It's very interesting and also plays a lot into the idea of a cult and the ideas behind a cult and what people are willing to do in order to prove that they are right. I think it was very well done. I didn't, some of the aliens, some of the jargon, again, went over my head a little bit, um, but I think it was meant to, I think it was written to go over your head. Because the majority of it I kept up with, and then they'd say something be like, that meant what? I did not catch that one. Um, this, this series is turning slightly romantic. There's no spice, none. Um, these are two very intellectual people. Um, this, this is meant to be a thriller series, and that's kind of what it is. There is action. I would call it call it more like an action adventure kind of series, slight thriller aspects to it, because there's always that aspect of danger and you're never really sure what Theo's gonna do next and it's probably gonna be reckless and dangerous and I absolutely love that. So it's a lot of fun, but yeah, so that. <laughs> I will be continuing with this series. I really like the characters and I did realize that each of these characters have their own series from before this joint one, so I might go back and start listening to those as well. I'm a little nervous, but I'm also very intrigued, so might give that a shot. The next book that I read ended up being probably my favorite book of the month, and that is The Littlest Library by Poppy Alexander. I will be reading more by Poppy Alexander. Um, this follows Jess, who is in her early 30s, I want to say, and she has just lost her job and her grandmother has died. She was raised by her grandmother after her parents died. And losing her grandmother, she doesn't know what to do. She is a librarian, um, she's stuck, and she happens to stumble across a small house with a red foam box in the front and on a whim she buys it. She ends up moving here to this small town and she plans on staying there just to get her feet back under her in order to get, um, to figure out what she wants to do, find a new job, because she has an inheritance from her grandmother, but it's really not much. And so it'll, it'll stay, it'll help for uh, like this summer, but that's all she can do. And so she ends up using the foam box and making a library out of it since the town doesn't have a library. And it's just so cute. And it's such a sweet story about someone who's, over 30 who's still trying to figure out what to do now like she has no serious attachments she doesn't know what to do with her life and so she just she's lost she doesn't know and it's all about her figuring out what she wants with her life I did like the love interest in this one I enjoyed the fact that it was more about her figuring out her life than it was about the romance um, it was about her discovering a place in a small town and a small town finding itself once again. And so I highly recommend this book. Everyone should read it. It's so god dang cute. And there's so many different aspects where you get to meet a lot of different people from um, the town and it, nothing is what it's see. It's, it's so much fun. It's so cute. It's not a thriller. I don't know why I made it sound like it right there. It's just a little romance, like contemporary sweet story. So five out of five, highly recommend. Go read this. This is a library book, but I do plan I'm buying this book. It's so well done. It's so cute. The next book that I read was an audiobook. It's just a short little novella. It's called The Christmas Podcast by Emily March. And 
This book was just so cute, and I don't know why all of a sudden I was craving a Christmas story, so I found one. I found a very short one, and it was just a cute little meet cute romance about a chef who is on her way home for Christmas with one of her, her dogs that she rescues on the side, and they end up getting caught in a snowstorm and wander into this crime podcaster's mansion on a hill. And over the course of the next, like, 48 hours, they fall in love. And it's just... Is it extra? Yes. Is it a Hallmark movie waiting to happen? Also, yes. Was it really cute and did it make me happy? Very much so, yes. <laughs> um, were there problems with it? Also, yes. Very much so. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5. It was wonderful. It was... It filled my need for needing a Christmas story in September. And that's about it. I don't know that I'll ever listen to it or read it again. I might just because it has some really adorable parts in it, but it was what it was. It was a Hallmark movie in an audiobook, so... Alright, so the last three books that I read in the month of September were all part of a series. I don't know how I ended up finding this. Actually, I do. So. I went on to Kindle Unlimited because I have my phone up by me while I'm at the desk at the library, and if I finish an article, I reward myself by letting myself read part of a Kindle Unlimited book. I went on to Kindle Unlimited, I went to Recommended, and went to the first recommended book series for me, and what came up was Defending Alley by Susan Stoker. I was like, alright, cool, what is it? looked it up, it's a Mountain Mercenaries series, is, is what the series is called, and basically it's about a group of ex-high military soldiers who go around and save women, who are, who have been kidnapped, who have been placed in impossible situations, um, and they help. They don't change the woman, and it is very much like an alpha story, I think that's the trope, is the alpha male trope. And they are very much alpha males, like, very much so. Like, I'm pretty sure the first one, um, our love in- our, our main character's name is Gray, and his love interest is Allie. Um, and Gray is an ex-Navy SEAL who basically got screwed over by the American government, so dropped out- or in, was honorably discharged, and was like, I'm- I'm done. Yeah. And that was very similar with a lot of these guys. There's- seven books in this series, <laughs> and the first one, Defending Alley, um, Gray is sent out on a mission with one of the other guys named, whose nickname is Black, and they end up, um, they're supposed to be intercepting a payment on a ship in the middle of the ocean, or out in the ocean off the coast of, I want to say, California, but this guy who collects people. And he collects odd people, uh, unique people, special people, and they're expecting a to intercept a payment, and they end up finding a human being on board the ship. Her name is Allie, and she basically um, takes no shit. It was really well done, and the first actually half of the book was them talking to each other because the ship that he finds her on ends up sinking, and so he has to kind of try and drag her to shore, and they're in the Pacific Ocean. She doesn't have a wetsuit or a dry suit on. He has a dry suit on, so he's able to keep swimming, but, like, the whole time he's getting her to talk and tell him what's going on and what's happening, and they share stories, and it was really kind of an, a unique way that I've never read to have a story come to pass. So, that was the first one. First one, I gave four to five to. The second book in the series was Defending Chloe. Now, this one, our love interest main guy, his name is Ro, and he is British, so he has an accent, which is always fun. Um, we also get his story, and all of these guys have been through a lot. So they're not just like, oh, I, I was military and everything's great. It's like, no, shit stuff, shit's happened. Like, um, they all went through something really traumatic, either in their childhood, in their adult lives, recently, whatever it was, and it brought them all together. Um, and... In Defending Chloe, Ro meets this girl who gets dropped off randomly at his garage. He faces as a mechanic, and um, 
it turns out she is the sister of an up-and-coming mafia man and she wants out and so him and the guys go in and try to save her where her brother has basically turned her into a sex slave and it's it's intense you really do need to look at the trigger warnings for a lot of these there's a lot of really messed up things happening again very well done i actually liked book two better than book one which is interesting because i didn't think i was going to i didn't think anything i could enjoy these books more than i enjoyed the first one and i definitely enjoyed the second one more the third one defending morgan was probably one of my favorites but again it still got like a four out of five because i'm still slightly iffy on parts of the romance that are going on there um but uh, the third book, Defending Morgan, was done super well. Part of the Mountain Mercenaries group is uh, they were dispatched. They were dispatched to the Dominican Republic in order to find a kidnapped child, and they find the kidnapped child. But with the kidnapped child, they also find a young woman, Morgan, who was kidnapped off the streets of her hometown a year ago. And they find her and discover that she's been protecting this child for the past probably two months, I think it was, since the kid has been kidnapped. Yeah, and so they end up being like, yep, all right, you're coming with us too. Take both of them back to the States. And the first part of this book, they, uh, Morgan and the male interest in this story, whose nickname is Arrow, they get separated from the rest of the group. And yeah, basically... That's what they kind of, they, they go through hiding in the Dominican Republic from people that are trying to get her back. And we'd never really find out exactly what happened, but we know it was really bad. And there are some descriptors that are very, very toxic. And there's a lot that Defending Morgan took turns left and right that I did not see coming at all. And I, mm, it was a lot. So be warned on these. Again, look at the trigger warnings. There's quite a few of them. But these books are so well done. I did give this one a 4 out of 5. So yeah, so those are the books that I managed to read in the month of September. I'm just as surprised as you. I actually managed to read some while I read half of the textbook and about 15 articles. So look at me go! I'm doing the thing, guys! But October will be interesting because I have papers due in my classes, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, and as far as what I'm reading right now, I did start the fourth book of the Mountain Mercenary series. It's called Defending Harlow and has to do with a woman's home. So I'm very excited. I am like a quarter of the way through that one. I have an addiction, guys, and she's got like 10 series out. So I'm very excited. <laughs> All right, that's what I got for you guys here today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, now is the perfect time to give it a thumbs up and to hit that subscribe button down below. We post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and the occasional Sunday. And if you want to be reminded when we post these videos, hit the little bell icon down below. Until next time, guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep reading. Bye!